dear brethren. Dear Almighty Father, again we thank you for all the many blessings you have given us. We praise and glorify your holy name. Have mercy to forgive all our sins and wickedness. Cleanse us and accept us as your sons and daughters. Please accept our worship service. Bless us in our different spiritual duties. Help us to uplift our spiritual life and help us to be humble and obedient to your commandments. Allow us to receive your Holy Spirit. Bless our faith and give us more love. And all the glory only belongs to your holy name. Bless us also with a good health. Heal those who are sick and bless kindly those who are in need, especially to help those who are oppressed and in need so we could give our humble share of help. Those who are in jail, those who are suffering acts of wickedness, protect them and free them. Bring all this to the soonest possible end, if ever possible. And those inside the institution and those who are responsible in leading the institution, please also bless them, allow them to repent and to return. Everything will heal if this is ever possible and if this is your holy will. Bless our dear brother who will preach your holy words that all worshippers might find your graces and blessings. Our dear Lord Jesus, please mediate our prayers. Help us to be your true and upright disciples and help us to be fully ready to meet you the soonest possible time, whenever our Father will send you back on earth. Our dear Almighty Father, we are begging you again humbly to forgive our sins and to accept our worship service. Because all this we ask and beg, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, once again, we are very thankful to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for the borrowed life and strength that we continue to have, but most especially for the faith that has been instilled in our hearts, knowing that this is our divine duty to worship and to magnify the holy name of our Lord God in heaven. Beloved brethren, we know that as we sojourn in this world, it is pertinent that each and every one of us 
continue to follow the teachings and commandments of our Lord God. Being human as we are, we know that things, in order to make sense, have to go through logic in our mind. One thing needs to make sense so that we may believe it, we may follow it, or we may use it in our life. This probably is what hinders a lot of people from putting their full trust in our Lord God, simply because it is hard to imagine our Lord God to be an entity who is able to give us the things that we ask for or the things that we need. Many people put their trust in things that are tangible, things that they can see, they can touch, they can hear, they can talk to, things that they can immediately see the effect or the repercussion of what they are asking for. So whether they ask a person for help, that person may be able to give that help that they need or they won't. They may go to uh, authorities, to different organizations or group of people or even agencies for help of the things that they need. And then they would immediately know if they have been approved, if they their request has been given, or it has been denied, or it will not happen. So in order for a person to accept anything, it needs to satisfy his senses. And that has been the case for many, many years for people to grow into that kind of mentality that in order for them to believe something, it has to be tangible or it has to be seen or felt by the person who wants to believe in it. But as true members of the Church of Christ, we know that it is our faith that our Lord God is the one who created us, who has given us our life and strength and health. And it is our faith that it is also our Lord God who gives us everything that we need, answers our prayers, punishes us when we sin. And he is the one guiding us as we continue to sojourn in this world. But even though we have received that doctrine, even though that this is our faith for a very long time, there are times that it is still hard for others to put their full trust in our Lord God. That's why the lesson that we will study today, based on the fundamental doctrines of the Church of Christ and the lessons taught by Brother Iranyu G. Manalo, we will understand the reason why we should not be afraid to put our full trust in our Lord God. Let us start our study as we read what is written here in Psalm 34 and the verse is 8. This is what is recorded. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The Bible says that our Lord God is good. So everything about our Lord God is good. What he wants, especially for the people whom he has created, especially the people whom he has set aside as his nation, he wants everything that is good for them. He does not want to harm them. He does not want evil against them. But it is for us, whom God has set aside, to taste and see for ourselves, to experience for ourselves that our Lord God is truly good. This is where a lot of people are afraid to take that plunge, to take a leap, a leap of faith, to truly, truly experience that our Lord God is good. But for that person who has taken that leap of faith, blessed is that one whose trust is in our Lord God in heaven. Now, what is the invitation of our Lord God himself to his people, to his nation, especially those who put their trust in him? Let us read what is written here in Isaiah chapter 58 and the verses 9 up to 11. When you pray, I will answer you. When you call to me, I will respond. If you put an end to oppression, to every gesture of contempt and to every evil word, if you give food to the hungry and satisfy those who are in need, then the darkness around you will turn into brightness of noon. And I will always guide you and satisfy you with good things. I will keep you strong and well. You will be like a garden 
that has plenty of water, like a spring of water that never goes dry. Now, our Lord God himself made a promise for those people whose faith will be towards him, that when they pray, our Lord God will answer. When they call, he will respond. But there is a condition. As you can see in the verse, there is an if statement. What is an if statement? It is a condition that if it is satisfied, then it will be given or it will come true. If not, then it will be invalid. So the if statement here, the condition given by our Lord God is that if you put an end to oppression, therefore, if anyone would be an agent or source of oppression, of contempt, of evil words, then our Lord God will not answer their prayers. Our Lord God will not respond when they call, even if they call night and day. That is why, come to imagine, beloved brothers and sisters, even if an institution, a religious institution, have all the trappings of our organized religion, they have the houses of worship, they have the programs of a worship service. They have a minister, a pulpit, choir members, officers, everything. But they are a source of oppression against other people. That they have contempt and evil words against other people, especially those whom they consider as their enemies. Then even if they pray, even if they worship day and night every day, God will not answer. He will not respond. So our Lord God himself is giving us the condition that if satisfied, then he will be their God. If not, then even if they go to worship service, even if they hold an office, even if they are ministers or the executive minister itself, God will not respond. But for those who will put their faith in our Lord God, who will not be agents of oppression, contempt, and evil, those who will be agents or instruments of helping those who are oppressed, persecuted, those who are hungry and in need, those who are helpless, defenseless. If we are the ones used by our Lord God as instruments to extend His love and compassion, then the darkness around us, Everything that is evil will be taken away. We will be blessed by our Lord God with everything that we need, like a spring of water that never goes dry. So this is a very beautiful promise by our Lord God. It is up to us to satisfy this condition of our Lord God. And if we do, then he will answer whatever we pray to him the things that we ask for the contents of our hearts the things that we have been praying for the things that we are longing for what is the invitation of our lord jesus christ himself to those who will be able to fulfill the condition of our lord god let's read john 16 24 until now you have not asked for anything in my name ask and you will receive so that your happiness may be complete. So our Lord God made a promise. He set up the condition, the terms and condition of that promise for those who want to achieve it and those who will not be able to achieve it and those who will be able to follow our Lord God and satisfy this condition. Our Lord Jesus Christ told them that if you ask anything in my name, you will receive. So that is why asking something from our Lord Jesus Christ in his name does not automatically give us what we ask for. Because we have to go from the very source, which is our Lord God in heaven, the source of all things. If he himself set a condition and we follow it, then our Lord Jesus Christ will be used as an instrument that those things that we ask in his name will be given unto us. We will receive it. Is this the same condition or teaching or doctrine that was taught by the apostles? Let us read what is written in Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 19. Don't worry about anything. 
Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from His glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So what are the things that we need, beloved brothers and sisters? What are the things that we pray for? Are you praying for your family, your loved ones? Are you praying for your children? Are you praying for your studies, your career? Are you praying for, like, for example, there are people who are getting into a relationship. Are you praying for your relationship? Are you praying for uh, the things that you want in the future? If you are about to have a baby, are you praying that your baby will be healthy? That God will protect you during your pregnancy? Are you praying for you to be able to go over your grief and the loss of a loved one? Are you praying for the things that you are asking for, what you are hoping for? So in everything that we are hoping for, let us pray for it. And when we pray, Apostle Paul said, don't worry about anything. Because if we pray to our Lord God, let's say, um, I hope that our Lord God will help me in my studies. I hope he'll let me pass the exam because I have an exam tomorrow. If you're praying for that, and then after your prayer, you, you suddenly think, well, does, does God know calculus? Does God know geomet the, all of those tests that you're going to have? If you're going to do that, then you're doubting our Lord God. So let us not worry because everything is in the hands of our Lord God. And he is the one supplying us with everything that we need. But don't forget to thank our Lord God for everything that he has done. The life, our strength, our health. And as we sojourn in this world, it is our Lord God who always guide each and every one of us. But because we are human, because we are frail, because we are prone to temptation and sin, there are many times that we are filled with iniquities and we have shortcomings with our Lord God. And sometimes this is the reason why we get punished. And if God punish, punishes his people, would that be the end of it? Or is our Lord God teaching us a lesson so that we may be able to repent and continue to follow him? Let us read. Here in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 up to 15. Whenever I hold back the rain or send locusts to eat up the crops or send an epidemic on my people, if they pray to me and repent and turn away from the evil they have been doing, then I will hear them in heaven, forgive their sins and make their land prosperous again. I will watch over his, this temple and be ready to hear all the prayers that are offered here. Now our Lord God, he may punish his people, send back, uh, hold back rain and send epidemic diseases, locusts to his very people. Why? Because they have neglected their duty. Because they have done wrong in the sight of our Lord God. Just if our Lord God Himself will be the one to put punishment to His people, He is also the one who will give back the things that they ask for, who will be able to forgive their sins and make their land prosperous again. That is why, beloved brothers and sisters, even though we have our brothers and sisters who are still inside the institution, who have been agents of oppression, of evil words, of persecution, we should not condemn them because God is giving them an opportunity to make their stand on the side of God's righteousness. He's giving them an opportunity, if it is still according to his will, that they may repent so that they may go back to our Lord God, be forgiven of their sins, 
and be blessed again only if they will satisfy God's condition. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, we all know that we are here not because we're holier than others, not because we are perfect in any way. We are also filled with imperfections and have our own shortcomings. But what is the difference with God's people who will continue to uphold the doctrines that we have received, who will try their best not to be corrupted of this world? If we are among those people, even though we may go through trials, even though we may go through epidemic and things that are the tribulations of this world, what is the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ? John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Our Lord Jesus Christ emphasized that we are here not because we chose him, not because we are perfect, not because we're better, but because he chose us. He appointed us. So even if there would be people who will condemn us, who will expel us, who will displace us or vilify us, do not fret. Because they are not our Lord Jesus Christ, nor our Lord God. Our Lord Jesus Christ was the one who chose us and appointed us. And it is our divine duty to bear fruits. Fruits of the Spirit. Fruits that will last, and these are the good things that we have been taught through the pristine doctrines that we have received. So if we are to bear fruits, this would be the reason for our Lord Jesus Christ to answer our prayers when we pray to God in his name. But is life perfect? Knowing that we are among those chosen by our Lord Jesus Christ? That we have been appointed? Are we going, going through life easy? Not a care in the world? Not having any problems? Since we are the ones handpicked and chosen by our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, what will we experience in this life? Let's read what's written in Zechariah 13.9. I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. So if we are among those chosen by our Lord Jesus Christ, it does not mean that we're going to go through life with all of the happiness and all of the things that we can rejoice in this world. No. Even more, we will go through fire. The fiery trials of this world. Why? Because we have to be made pure. So if we are going through life, if we are experiencing hardship, persecution, oppression, if we're going through life with sorrows and grief, this is not punishment. This is not being condemned by our Lord God. This is only proof that we are among those who belong to that group chosen by our Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the one leading us because we go through life, through the fiery trials of this world, so that in the end, our Lord God will say, these are my people and he is our God. And if we are able to go through life and continue following our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Despite the many trials that we are going through. Despite those who are still in jail. Those who are still being hunted down. Persecuted and oppressed. If we go through life. And we endure knowing that this is God's will. What is the promise to each and every one of us? Let us read Isaiah 65.24. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking to me about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. 
beloved brothers and sisters, how many times in our life that when we pray to our Lord God as if we haven't finished yet and we already feel the Holy Spirit. We already feel that God is paving the way for us to receive what we are asking for. This is the very blessing that we are asking God now. That when we pray to him for the things that we need, when we pray to him for our brothers and sisters who are still in dangerous places, those who are persecuted and oppressed, may God answer our prayers. Listen to our supplications. So that in the end, beloved brothers and sisters, we will all be set free to worship and magnify the name of our Lord God in heaven. If we are able to do this, beloved brothers and sisters, what would be our feeling as God's people who put their whole trust in our Lord God? Let us read the last verse here in Hebrews 10, 22 up to 23. So let us come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith, with hearts that have been purified from a guilty conscience and with bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we cannot trust God to keep his promise. We can put our trust in God because he will, he will keep his promise. So let us come near to God, beloved brothers and sisters. And we, when we come to him, let it be with a pure heart and sure faith so that God will listen to our supplication he will hear our request and give the things that we ask for. Let us prove to him that we, even though how small our group may be, we are the ones who will continue to follow him. Let us sing the hymn of our faith before we pray. I'm worshiping in loving power. As we come to you this morning, we come as humble as we know how, knowing our Father that you are good and that you are a merciful God. You continue to give us the opportunity that we need to be able to correct any wrong that we've done so that we may be able to receive that eternal life that you promise unto you, Jim. We pray, our Father, that you would continue to guide us. As we listened to your holy word this morning, we was able to see the things in our lives that we must do in order to receive the salvation. And we ask your Father to please open up our hearts and our minds of understanding that we will truly realize and understand that we must follow your guidance in order to receive 
the salvation that you promised unto your children. That we must leave any evil that we have. We must leave any oppression that we are done. We must help those that, hinder, that need help so that, Father, we may be able to truly live by your commandments and do the things that would please and glorify the most holy name. We pray that you visit all of your children this morning, especially those of your children that may be ill. We ask the Father that they visit them. And if it is our holy will, heal them from their ailments so that they may be able to continue on fulfilling their duties and serving their most holy name. Those that may be growing cold in faith, we know our Father, if they would call on you and ask that you strengthen them, that you would strengthen them so that they would be able to overcome any obstacles they encounter in this life and be able to go on fulfilling their obligations and serving their most holy name. Father, we need you every day of our lives. We know that we can't do anything without you. No matter how much money that we may have, how much influence that we may have in this life, we must be able to follow your will and do the things that you require of your servant in order to receive the salvation that you promise unto your children. We pray, our Father, that you would bless those of your children that are being oppressed, those of your children that are being persecuted, those that are in hiding, those that are in jail, falsely accused. We ask your Father to please strengthen them so that they will always know that you are there, watching over them, keeping them safe, providing the things that they need in life. And we ask your Father to give us all that faith that we need that we will continue to call on you and ask for the things that we need in life. And we will ask it in the name of your son so that we will receive the blessings that we ask from you. We do believe this morning that you've heard that all of your children this morning, that you've blessed us in everything that we've done and that you will continue to guide us and that you will continue to watch over your servants whom you set before us to continue to lead us in a rightful way of serving the most holy name. We truly believe that you've heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed, because we ask all of these things in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the grace of salvation from our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.